guys, and welcome back to the Dice Tower. I'm Camilla, and today we're going to be taking a look at an expansion for Forest Shuffle. This is going to be called Forest Shuffle Alpine. It's a small um, small expansion here that's just going to bring some more cards to the game. Hopefully add some variability, things like that. We're going to see a new tree symbol and a new tree type. You know what? Let's take a look at some cards, and then I'll let you know what I think. So as you can see here, the Alpine expansion is just 36 cards that are going to mix right into your main base deck that comes in the game. These cards can have some new scoring opportunities as well as a couple ecosystems here in the Alpines. Uh, so it's 36 cards total. We have some trees. It looks like 14 of them, and then we have some top bottom cards and some left right cards as well. That's going to come into it. All of them are going to have this alpine symbol here on, on each of the cards have that, which is kind of cool because again, it's bringing in this whole area into, into light here, into your forest that you can grow. So they all interact with each other and, and have that symbol. It's a nice way to kind of have a shout out to it being in the expansion integrated into the card and as well as help it just functional function a little bit. Um, I guess kind of smoothly with the with the base game. So let's take a look at the trees here first of all. Uh, the trees are going to come with two different types up here. You have the pink and the purple. I forget what they are called. The alpine larch and the Swiss pine are the two trees. Um, kind of categories that you get here. And as you can see, they are either going to be points or scoring per this tree type. However, a lot of them, they still have that other tree symbol, which is going to integrate again smoothly into your regular base game, which might score for all of the trees specifically. So other than that, let's take a look at the top down ones here. So it brings in a new butterfly as well, the Phoebus Apollo, which gives you a sixth one to score. So the base game can only go up to five. This gives you another butterfly going towards that five scoring, or if you happen to get this one, you can score up to six butterflies. So that's really interesting there. We get some more ferns, which, uh, you know, varies that and then it comes with quite a few birds, which I found really interesting. I really liked that we're seeing some of this cave scoring come into play a little bit more, and I think that we're good to that in the maybe the horizontal cards. Let's see. But there's one that I that's what I'm seeing in this is you're seeing the cave come into play a little bit more. Yeah, it's gonna be in the left-right card, so we'll talk about here in a minute. So some bearded vultures, which is gonna put that in score based on your cave. Um, there's some more butterflies, different bird scoring. So a couple different ways to score stuff that we've seen. And then finally, we have the left and right cards, again with the ferns. And then we have a Steinbach here, which is neat because it's just a 10 point card, but on top of that 10 points, you get to take another turn. So you immediately get to take another turn and it's 10, 10 points end game. It is expensive to play, but this is a really neat alternative or again, kind of um, I guess counterpart to the bear in which you can put a bunch of cards into your cave. So I like seeing those those high scoring animals and more of those. Some more bats. A marmot here. And then we have a mountain hare, which was interesting as well because it counts as a European hare. And again, it's going to boost that hare scoring. If you're if you if you like that, you have one on the left and one on the right. And I thought that was again interesting because it's gonna go into that scoring, but it cannot share a spot with the other hairs either. So it takes up another spot on your tree, but it's also gonna boost that scoring. Um, that was interesting because I think that this is already a really strong strategy going into the hairs. Uh, so interesting to see that boosted, whereas some of the other cards might be bringing some balance to it, but they're in there as well. And it is taking up a spot on your on your tree in your forest here. So that's about all to this expansion. Like I said, it's just going to go right into the base game and your main deck of cards and give you some variety. So let's go up top and talk about the final thoughts with this. Alright, so like I was saying there, there's a couple things that I really like. I think there's some interesting scoring in, in this deck of cards here that you're adding into the base game. Um, I, I like the high scoring, uh, what was it, a Steinbach? A Steinbach. I really think that's interesting that it's a 10 point scoring card. In the base game, we have some five points and we also have ones that score 10 points or even more if they're coupled together and the conditions are right, such as the wild boar, which is a strategy that I really like. Um, and you can definitely couple up on that. 
but you have to really go into the strategy. So what I like about the Steinbock is it's just 10 points. So it's expensive to play, but then it's, it's, it's done and you move on and, and work towards your other strategy. So I think that that's really interesting. I like that the cards all interact with each other, that you are bringing this whole forest to your forest, this whole area to your forest. And so they score off each other really well, but they also score off the base game cards too, which makes for a really smooth integration. There's not a lot, there, there's really none. I mean, other than the couple new symbols that you understand those, there's no new rules to learn. It's just as seamless if you understand the base game and how those cards work. It is what it is. I mean, you just kind of move forward. I think there's a lot of interesting beefing up those scoring opportunities. So like we were saying, seeing with the butterflies there, if you like that butterfly, strategy. It just brings a little bit of life to it, a little oomph behind it. it. Gives a little credence to that strategy, I guess, even if you're going for the butterflies, because now you have a sixth one that you can um, beef up that whole set. It just kind of strengthens it a little bit. Uh, we also, with the vulture card, I love that we're using the cave a little bit more. Uh, that's one thing that I think there was only two cards in the base game. You had the bear, of course, and then you had a raccoon, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, a raccoon that also would allow you to put stuff in your cave. So now the new vulture isn't adding anything to your cave, but it's giving it a little bit more oomph. If you are going to that bear strategy, boom, then you're double scoring that cave because it's one point per card in your cave. So it just seemed to bring a little, again, oomph to some of these strategies in it. I um, thought the uh, the hair was an odd choice, um, but maybe that's because that's my go-to kind of strategy is with the hairs, telling away my little secret there. But I feel like that was already such a strong strategy, but it is really balanced well with having to, ha it takes up more parts of your tree. You're not just taking and um, you're not utilizing that one side of the tree that you put your European hairs on it. So, so that was good. It's a good balance to it. Overall, I'm going to come down to 7.5 on this. Uh, I think it's really smoothly integrated, but by no means is it a you have to have it. If you've played this game 100, 150, 200 times, something like that, yeah, maybe you want a little bit, this little additional oomph to the scoring or balance to the scoring is necessary. Um, but if not, sure, pick it up, throw it in, and don't think about it again. I think that's very, very valid reason to get an expansion, but at the same time, by no means is it necessary. Once you put it in, you're probably not going to feel it. And so because of that, it doesn't bring a whole lot if this is a casual game that you play and, and you know, have 50 plays or less on. Um, but, but if you are kind of approaching that we play it a lot, it's a go-to, then sure, I'm sure you're going to appreciate the variety. I also like that they did bring in the balance of it that it does change the number of cards you take out. And so they give you that new... Um, those, those new numbers to pull out. So for example, in a two player game, I think in the base game, you pull out 30 cards in this one, you in, with the expansion and you pull out 45. So you're not going to add any time to your game either. It's kind of maintaining that, that sweet spot um, on the table. So, so for me, it's a 7.5. I'm happy to put it in. I'm happy to forget it's in and just teach with it and enjoy that it's there to bring these little, little more life to the scoring or a little new additional breath to to the scoring, but by no means do I think you need to run out and get it as soon as you possibly can. So for Shuffle Alpine, that's a 7.5, a seal of approval from me. Thanks for joining me here at the Dice Tower. Until next time, I'm Camilla. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another video from the Dice Tower. Hey, you want to learn more about us? Communicate with us. We have a Facebook group. We have a Discord channel. Lots of different ways to get involved with the Dice Tower. You can find that in our link tree link below. So just click that and we'll take you and you can communicate with us on Facebook. Join our Facebook groups. There's lots of cool things that you can find and become part of the Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tom Basil.